Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What an entrance. I'm, I'm Ara Najarian, first vice chair of the Metro Board of Directors and also board chair of Metrolink. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to Metro's annual State of the Agency address and reception. This is an annual event for Metro employees, community leaders, stakeholders, and the media that highlights Metro's past and present accomplishments under the direction of the outgoing board chair and mayor of Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti. It also gives Metro CEO Stephanie Wiggins and our incoming board chair, LA County Supervisor Hilda Solis, the opportunity to present their vision for the agency over the coming year. This is a Metro tradition that goes back five years, but I'm sure you will all agree the challenges of the previous years pale in comparison to this last year, which has been unlike any other in recent memory. The past year has been filled with unprecedented challenges as our region struggled to address the devastating effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on our community and its disruptive effects on LA County's public transportation system. But despite it all, we never gave up on our mission to deliver the best possible transportation services to the public over the past year. While we reflect back on last year's challenges and our actions to overcome them, we will also be looking forward to recovering from the pandemic and reimagining a new normal for our transportation system in the post-pandemic era that lies ahead. This year marks a new milestone in the agency's efforts to embrace equity at the highest levels of its leadership. This year, we celebrate the appointment of two women of color to serve as Metro's chair and CEO. This is the first time that both chair and CEO have been women at the same time in the agency's nearly 30 year history. Their top priorities will be to focus on equity and improving the transit experience for all Metro riders. You'll hear from each of them today, but first, as I mentioned, so much of the past year has been unique and unprecedented for all of us. This is especially true for essential services such as public transit. We had to figure out a way to get through the pandemic while looking ahead and reimagining our service in the years ahead. Metro has produced a video that captures so much of the strangeness of the past year, as well as the promise of better days ahead. Roll it. And I can't start with the celebration without first commemorating that it's come at a cost, a cost of lives no longer with us, from LA Metro workers and contractors. This war hasn't been without casualties, but it has been fought by brave men and women who stood up to say that LA is something worth fighting for, working for, and keeping going. And we're here collectively to celebrate that hope on the horizon that isn't just some emotion that we're feeling, but we can materially feel it, see it these days. riders are in need right now. Metro, as you know, is responsible for much more than just moving people from point A to point B. We also provide jobs. We provide access to education. We build housing. These roles are very important now more than ever. One of my top priorities will be helping our riders through this recovery. 
I know that I'll be able to count on Stephanie to carry that out. Together, we'll be able to uplift Metro's most vulnerable community. We have been and will continue to be a critical ally in fighting the pandemic in LA County. We've added mask dispensers on trains and buses to help riders comply with federal rules requiring masks. We also leverage our mobility on demand program to partner with First by the LA and deliver thousands of meals to households experiencing food insecurity. We cannot overstate the importance of equity in all we do, whether it's providing essential transit services or access to vaccinations. You know, LA County has many challenges ahead amid many exciting opportunities. The world is coming to our doorstep. Visitors are returning as our economy opens up, not to mention national and international events coming to the county. When the world arrives, they will find a steady rollout of new transportation projects. They will also find the backbone of Metro, and that is the more than 2,000 buses that are dispatched daily to reach every neighborhood, every school, and every job center in the county. But my immediate goals and focus will be on restoring transit service and helping Metro lead this county out of the pandemic and into a new dawn where customers come first and equity is at the center of everything we do. We are a public agency that is the connection for people to get to work and school, access health care, and connect with each other and the rest of the region. More than 2,000 buses means more than 2,000 bus operators and thousands of maintenance, mechanical, dispatching, and administration personnel. Each person doing their jobs well means people can get home to work or school and back on time and safely. Thank you, great video. To start our State of the Agency program, I'd now like to introduce Metro's immediate past board chair and the mayor of Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti. I've been on the Metro board since 2006. Hold, hold, what did you? Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> since 2006, a long time. And I've had the great pleasure to work closely with Mayor Garcetti over the years in implementing Metro's ambitious transportation agenda. This last year has been no exception. The mayor has led the charge in moving Metro's agenda forward in launching new zero emission buses, bus only lanes, Metro's next gen bus plan, and breaking ground on a new station to finally connect Metro Rail with LAX among many others. Please everyone, welcome mayor and previous Metro board chair Eric Garcetti. Well, thank you so much uh, to Arna Jarian, who's been a friend for so many years, who was chair when we did amazing things, and I was just a council member uh, in Hollywood, um, who has been not only a transportation visionary, but a dear friend and a great leader for Southern California. Um, and I'll get to Supervisor Solis in a moment. I couldn't be prouder to hand the uh, gavel over to her. But before I start with my prepared remarks, let me just say a couple things very briefly. You know, for a kid that grew up riding the RTD every single day, I feel like I'm living in a dream right now. <laughs> I feel like the son of immigrants from Mexico and from the Russian Empire who found this improbable place, landed just on the other side of the river in Boyle Heights, who probably had a pretty tough relationship with transportation between my grandfather's home that was taken for the 101 and then my father's home that was taken for the 110. Uh, the system that we had here that we then destroyed and took apart. But I've seen in the city always the promise of its place through its people and through this network. It's literally taken me everywhere. Whether it was to explore with friends and go to a movie or an arcade, whether it was to go to a museum or to ride with my daughter now, uh, nine years old, and to feel how that excitement that will come here in 2028 when the Olympics are here. This is the prism through which we refract who we are. And I also want to say one last thing is the years tell us things the days cannot see. 
If this year didn't teach us that, no year would. In the midst of the pain of the day throughout this year, we now have the opportunity after a year to look back and to assess what we have gone through, the trauma and the triumph, the pain and the promise of today. And so thank you for that introduction, Ara, and thank you all for being here. It's so good to be here with all of you today and to pass this gavel that I got from Mayor Butts into the able hands of mi hermana, Supervisor Solis. I know that she will not only keep equity at the center of everything that we do, but that her steady, forward-looking leadership in all that she does, but especially in Metro, will drive our recovery from the pandemic. And as Ara introduced me, I have the best title of any organization, immediate past president. All the prestige and none of the responsibilities. And while this might be my last uh, Metro uh, State of the Agency address as outgoing chair, it's the first in which we welcome Stephanie Wiggins in her new position as CEO. And I couldn't be more excited to have helped make that history with her. It's no surprise here, in the month since she returned to Metro, Stephanie is already making her mark, building the coalitions, doing the work necessary. As was mentioned, this is the first time in our history that both the chair and CEO are women. And I always say sometimes some lucky men sneak through, but if women just ran the world, we'd all be better off. And that's going to be the case here at Metro. So we are marking a long overdue milestone today, but we're also celebrating our good fortune for all of us at having these two women, not just any women, but these two women at the agency at this moment. And for me, it's been such a privilege to lead this board. Each one of the three times I've been your chair, I've been so impressed by how much this agency does and how well it serves our people. LA County is the most complicated place you could ever be in charge of. 88 cities, really a 19 million person metro area. We'd never start and build a government the way that we have here. But in some strange way, it came together this past year. It was clear in this past year, and I want to take a, a moment to acknowledge those who got us through, those people who worked tirelessly behind the scenes. Selfishly, the staff and the board clerk's office, thank you for all the technical glitches that we had to get through, the new ways we had to communicate, the marvelous grace with which you led us. You showed such exceptional flexibility and patience and pressure to us, so thank you. Let's give them a round of applause, and thank you. The professionals in the office of the CEO, uh, Leti Lecon, the uh, glue that keeps Metro together, the exceptional ethics team for their dedication and reliability in telling us what we can't vote on, the aces on Metro's communication team, that uh, video, as you saw, was probably enough you didn't even need to hear my speech, but your hard work and your perseverance to communicate in the toughest moments. Thank you to our labor partners. Thank you to every worker. And if we could take a moment, I do want to mark a moment of silence for those that we lost members of our family, our Metro family, who died as victims of this pandemic, and too many family members of our workers as well. We paid a price, but because of the hard work that this team showed, Metro now continued to provide its essential services to the people of LA County and to maintain in the most challenging times we've ever lived through, the highest ridership percentage of any large American transit agency in the country. That is something to be proud of. And because of your dedication, this agency kept its focus on the future and on the critical work. You know, we're, we're having open heart surgery while we're running a marathon. That we're building an entire new system while we're maintaining one. And we're doing more to create opportunity and mobility in historically underserved communities. We're trying to ease congestion and pollution we're trying to reimagine our future and to build a city of the future. I want to say a few words about what we accomplished this year. But first, let's take a step back and remember where we were. A year ago, when I became chair of the board, it was the start of the first surge of COVID-19. Remember, that was the July 4th weekend. The number of infections rose. The hospitalizations went up, followed closely by deaths, and our pain grew. People were losing jobs. They were falling behind on their rent. Businesses were struggling to stay afloat or going under. And through the fall and the winter, it even got worse. Remember in December and in January, we just didn't know if there'd be any more beds, whether we'd have enough PPE, when the vaccinations would come. That was only six months ago. And as the virus ravaged through our communities and our hospitals were filled beyond capacity, so many families lost loved ones, including, as I mentioned, our 
Metro family. We lost 11 employees, 11 of ours and two contractors who are part of our family for this virus. But we carried on. We carried on for them and with them, their families. Metro employees kept thousands of buses and trains running every single day so that a nurse could get to her shift, so that a janitor could show up, that seniors could get to the grocery store. And we changed how we did things on the turn of a dime. And if we learn one thing, please, I beg you, let's find ways to get out of our way. Don't find the rules to why we can't do things. Let's find the ways that we can. We showed that with boardings at the back of the bus, new stringent cleaning and safety protocols that we brought in overnight, fare collection to keep operators safe that was suspended. And we provided financial relief directly to struggling families. We fought for over and over and over. Remember those dark days? We didn't know if Washington would show up. But because of our advocacy, we got $2 billion in federal relief we were spending the money not knowing if it would be replenished because it was the right thing to do. But it helped us avoid devastating permanent service cuts and slowdowns of our priority capital projects. And of course, we weren't just hit with a public health crisis and a massive economic downturn last year. We also came up with a reckoning, a painful but absolutely necessary reckoning with racial justice in America. Angelinos, like people across this country and the world, rose up together after we watched George Floyd murder and we demanded change. Metro responded. We didn't just say we're a transit agency, and that's for other levels of government to do. We mobilized our Office of Equity and Race, which is charged with measuring and responding to racial disparities in projects and programs. And the office conducted a thorough equity assessment of our budget, the first time we've ever brought in a racial equity lens to our budget. The new office now builds on this bold equity work. The agency has already launched. And so that approach that Metro and city governments and county governments as a whole have embraced an approach that sees everything through an equity lens, because if you're not looking for it, you won't see it. For Metro, that means taking a close look at who we educate, who we train, who we hire. With Seed LA, our pipeline to fill the transportation jobs, the building trade jobs that we need, the mechanics jobs that we need, the operators jobs that we need. We're giving priority to young people who grow up in our communities, people who have experienced homelessness themselves or housing insecurity, those who have been incarcerated or had an incarcerated family member, who have come out of the foster care system, child protection, or the juvenile justice system. You see, we see the promise of our city in them. There are future train operators and engineers, maybe even our future CEO. And we're considering an equity lens in terms of who we serve, because we know we are an equity agency. Just look at our riders. And through the next gen bus plan, the miles of bus only lanes, 27 miles just in the city of LA alone and throughout the county, many more, Metro Micro, which is bringing a new transportation option to hundreds of thousands of Angelinos for that first and last mile. Equity is at the front of our minds when it comes to everything we do, like fares. I hope this is the turning of a page, and I know it, it's a scary thing to do, but our Fairless System Initiative, which, dirty little secret, we've kind of lived through this past year when we weren't collecting fares, it has the potential to revolutionize the way Angelinos interact with Metro and the Munis with a simple concept that people in this county should not have to pay to use the public transportation system that we're building. We don't have many toll lanes and almost no toll roads. When you have a car, you're able to travel out for free. It's time for us to do the same that have no other options. And let's not overlook the bold momentum that has come and is beginning to crest with Measure M. We're in the midst of the largest public transportation expansion ever taken at one time in American history. That is LA leading the way. We are building or extending 15. When I say that number, other mayors and local leaders say, wait, wait, you said that wrong, right? It's like one or two. 15 rapid transit lines. No place in the nation is doing this right now, and no place has ever done it at once. We brought the East San Fernando Valley Transit Corridor to shovel-ready status, showing that Metro keeps its promises, even in the most challenging of times. We awarded the contracts for the Sepulveda Transit Corridor P3 project development agreement, proving yet again that Metro is leading when it comes to innovation. And we approved the proposed project for the NoHo Pasadena bus rapid transit line, advancing a transit corridor with huge potential between the valley that I know Mr. Najarian is going to champion. And that's not to mention advancements on the east side extension, the Torrance extension, the West Santa Ana branch, or even the mega projects under construction. This work of us building the city that we dream of has never stopped. And now, after a year in which we have had all so much 
pain to hold on to, we can finally feel hopeful about the future. So as you know, three weeks ago, most of the public health restrictions for COVID-19 were lifted. No place else in the world is living the way we live right now. They're still in those painful months that we were in just six months ago in almost every other country in the world. But here, to make sure nobody was left behind, now that things are open, we accelerated the restoration of transit service, not six or 12 months down the line, but now. Because we don't want somebody to miss that job interview. We don't want that small business owner to miss that bank appointment. We want them to stand up and lead this recovery. And Metro is emerging from this crisis not only stronger, but even more committed to achieving our ambitious goals. This is not simply a transportation agency. I know that the supervisor feels the same way. In the video, she nodded her head. I know that our board members like Arnajari and our CEO know we do more than move people. We build communities. We clean the air. We train people for good jobs. We do so much more than move millions of people across LA County. This is an agency committed to creating that affordable housing that we need, as many as 8,000 housing units in the next decade so that people can stay here, which would be income restricted. Just last week, we saw that commitment with the groundbreaking of La Veranda, which Supervisor Solis and I were at a project in Boyle Heights to create 76 affordable housing units. 100% of them are affordable housing units on the corner of, corner of Cesar Chavez and Soto, two blocks away from where my family used to live. So that as we build lines, we don't move people out. And this is an agency that is focused on sustainability. We're tackling smog and greenhouse gas emissions, making tangible improvements in people's quality of life. And we saw that focus last year when we launched and completed zero emission bus conversion on the G line, a huge step towards our 100% zero emissions fleet. We'll have American built cleaning up our air buses that will provide middle-class jobs if we get this right. This is an agency that loves the future, but it doesn't ignore the present. We will build that future for the people of this region, whether that's by ending the federal ban on local hire so we can hire our people during construction when we're seeing projects throughout our community, or, sorry, I went off script, so, or, or, there it is, or setting a new path for public safety on the metro system with the Public Safety Advisory Council and a down payment of $40 million for sharing and co-authoring policing alternatives and homeless outreach. The start of last year, we faced a very simple choice, back down or step up. Everything was on the line, but we didn't retreat. We rose to the challenges, and now it is time for us to build back. We're not looking to return to the way that things were. We want our future to be something different. In my State of the City address this spring, I said the word that came to mind that defines Los Angeles in 2021 is becoming. This is a city that is becoming more just, becoming more equal, becoming more kind, becoming more itself than we have ever given it the opportunity to be. And what we are and who we are in Los Angeles is encapsulated in this remarkable agency defined by its brilliant people and the passion to lead the future. So let's continue to rebuild and to reimagine this place together. Let's continue to think big and bold, to be unafraid to act. Let's beat this pandemic once and for all and create a stronger, fairer, and better, more connected city for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Garcetti. You've given us a wonderful overview of some key accomplishments in the last year. Next, I'd like to introduce new Metro CEO, Stephanie Wiggins. I've had the great pleasure of working in lockstep with Stephanie Wiggins in dual capacities at both Metro and MetroLink over the years. Stephanie brings a long history of leadership in the realm of public transit and in the infrastructure industry as her new role as Metro's CEO. She truly has a 360 degree view of both Metro and the broader transportation landscape in Southern California. She is an experienced leader who will help the agency navigate past the pandemic and into a new period of progress in making Metro a more equitable and customer focused agency. I look forward to continuing to work with you, Stephanie, as we embark 
on your ambitious agenda this year. Please come up and share with us your vision in your new role. Stephanie Wiggins. Thank you, Director Nigerian, and good morning, everyone. I am so excited for my first State of the Agency as CEO. I want to give a big warm welcome to all of our special guests, Supervisor uh, Holly Mitchell, I see has joined us, honorable elected officials, yes, and my leadership team. I also want to give a special welcome to members of our small business community, community-based organizations, and all the young people joining us from the East LA Renaissance Academy. The truth is, Metro relies on its partnerships with all of you to realize its full potential. So thank you for being here today. I would like to start by acknowledging the leadership and dedication of our outgoing board chair, Mayor Eric Garcetti. <laughs> Mayor, you and your team have provided tremendous support to LA Metro. Your dedication and leadership of the LA Metro board over this last year will have positive lasting impacts for generations to come. Your team has been a pleasure to work with. Doug Mensman, thanks for being such an essential part of the mayor's transportation team. Dan Rodman, Stacy Weisfeld, Chad Edelman, Karishma Shamdasani, and Julia Campbell. We appreciate your collegiality and collaboration. We thank all of you for the critical work you do. Please join me in thanking the outgoing board chair, Mayor Garcetti, and his staff. This is also a special moment for us because we will have the pleasure of working with our incoming chair, Supervisor Hilda Solis. We'll hear from her shortly, but let me just say, we are thrilled to have her assume the role of chair at this critical time of reopening the county with a lens for racial justice and equity in transportation. And on a personal note, I am doubly excited that two women will be leading Metro together. I look forward to accomplishing great things uh, as a team in the coming year. And now that I have returned to Metro as CEO, and after nearly three decades in public transportation, one thing I am 100% clear about is this. People are the most important ingredient to our current and future success. This includes the people who make LA Metro work. Our employees, over 11,000 strong, like frontline worker Diana Martinez, who's been a bus operator with us for 23 years and operates the Rapid 704. Vorte, our recent employee of the month, he's a facilities maintenance mopper and waxer who hasn't missed a day of work during this pandemic. And William Dorsey, who worked his way up from an entry level utilities worker to now the top mechanic and has been with us for more than 51 years, so when he was with RTD. Amazing, amazing. They are the measure of the care and commitment of the people working at this agency and for our riders. Our partners, like Transportation Business Advisory Committee's Chair, Shanae Rourke, and the people who ride and use our system, like LA Metro superfan, Kenny Wong, who is nothing short of a public transit evangelist. Our driving principle will be to place the people like this at the center of everything we do. I see this as a core value for LA Metro and a touchstone to remind us why we do what we do every day. The reality is the more outstanding a person's experience is with our system, the more likely they will be to ride again and again. This is especially important for one of Metro's most critical rider groups our young people. I use the word critical because they are the writers of the future and the ones who will inherit this system. Their voices are not represented on any of Metro's advisory committees. At last count, there were 66,000 student tap card holders pre-COVID. 
That's only about 4.7% of the K through 12 population in LA County. So the untapped potential of student writers is high. One of my goals is for everyone, beginning with the young people, to choose Metro as their first option when considering their mode for transportation. With the very real opportunity of going fareless for K through 14, we need to engage young people. We need to seek their input to make this a system they can be proud of, one they want to ride and are personally invested in. We need the voices of young people represented at LA Metro. That's why I will establish the first ever Metro Youth Council to elevate the perspectives of young writers in the conversation about our future. We have such strong young leaders right here in our midst, like these amazing students from East LA Renaissance Academy who are here today. This is one of only three urban planning academies in the country, and they are here in Los Angeles. I'm also talking about people like the daughter of one of our very own Metro employee, Eugene Brown. Miss Ella Lorraine Carlisle Brown, who joins us here today, will be attending the Gala STEM School as an incoming sixth grader this fall. Ella Lorraine, please stand up and be recognized. I want youth like Ella Lorraine to not only be involved in helping Metro be everything it can be, I want her to know that she can be anything she wants to be. If we empower young writers to own their system, I believe all of our writers will benefit. So as many of you know, 2020 hit mass transit especially hard. Metro ridership dropped by 70%. And as we continue our post-COVID recovery, we are preparing to restore service to pre-pandemic levels by this fall. In addition, we are implementing our first major overhaul of our bus system in 25 years. I would also be remiss if I failed to mention the support of the federal government in helping LA Metro remain operational with much needed assistance in response to the pandemic. But these funds are only a short-term solution. To maintain our future viability, I will develop a five-year financial stability plan to offer a comprehensive approach to operations and capital project advancement. This is an opportunity to tighten our belts and look for efficiencies throughout the agency. It's a chance to enhance and improve program delivery to minimize cost overruns. And working together with the board, I look forward to capitalizing on the focus on climate change and equity being undertaken by the Biden-Harris administration. Together, we can continue to attract state and federal dollars for LA Metro projects that revitalize the economy of struggling communities, lower health disparities, reduce the impacts of climate change, and connect vulnerable populations to jobs, business opportunities, healthy food outlets, medical services, and other necessities. In the near term, we're making progress with our Next Gen Bus program, a total reimagining of the true workhorse of our transit system, our bus network. You've heard it from the mayor, but it bears repeating. Next Gen will deliver faster, cleaner, safer, and more frequent bus service. Riders will experience a network that is simpler to navigate with single frequent bus service on most key corridors. Not only that, We've also launched Metro Micro in seven of nine zones throughout the county. Metro Micro, Micro is the agency's new ride health service. Just last week, we celebrated with the mayor and the city the launch of the Alvarado bus priority lanes. These lanes provide riders with a faster ride to get to where they need to go. You'll be seeing more of these improvements in the months ahead. But it hasn't all been good news. In full transparency, we have learned some tough lessons over the last week as we rolled out Next Gen Phase 2. We must be clear in the way we communicate changes about our service, including fare collection, bus stops, and new routes. And I am committed to ensuring coordination, collaboration, and accountability are at the forefront of everything we do so our employees and our customers will get the world-class experience they deserve. 
Our people-focused agenda will also prioritize leading with an unwavering commitment to equity and compassion. Equity is something that Metro has focused on for a long time, but it's also an issue that requires us to constantly evolve. For example, consider the 10 and 110 express lanes. They improved access and travel times on two of the county's most congested freeway corridors. Express lanes were a transformative dis disruptive idea of the Metro Board of Directors, similar to how I see fareless transit. Equity was and is at the center of that program. We completed our first equity assessment during the environmental review to study the impact on low-income commuters. This is an example of an infrastructure initiative that leads with equity instead of responding with equity. And we've done a lot more since then. We recently broke ground on the Seed Transportation School, the first public boarding school nationwide to focus on the future workforce needs of the global transportation infrastructure industry. Metro's Women and Gr Girls Governing Council, their understanding how women travel study was completed in 2019. And this landmark study offered new insights into how women and girls ride Metro and how we can better serve their needs. The next step is to create a gender action plan or GAP. The main goal of GAP is to ensure that the agency's policies, programs, and activities include a gender perspective and promote the considerations of gender issues at all levels. This fiscal year, the actions from the findings of the study will be released in our first ever gender action plan. <laughs> Metro's commitment to equity has enhanced all areas of our agency and our projects. We developed a best in class approach to working with small, women owned and historically underutilized businesses. And just yesterday, we signed on to support Build Out California, the first industry association dedicated to the development of LGBTQ allied businesses in the architecture, engineering, and construction industries. And speaking of, the, of important partnerships, I'm proud of the work the Office of Equity and Race has led in developing Metro's first community-based organization partnering strategy. It establishes a consistent and equitable process for Metro to follow across the agency when directly or indirectly engaging CBOs for professional services. It is no surprise that our system deals with deep and complex challenges on a daily basis. We see people in difficult stages of life, some dealing with mental health issues. This isn't unique to Los Angeles, but it's my hope that we will be unique in our approach in addressing issues like homelessness and safety. Under my leadership, we will pursue new and more effective ways of addressing homelessness. We will no longer rely on law enforcement as a primary way of dealing with the unhoused. We will address unhoused people on our system with compassion and dignity. We will collaborate with our city and community partners and social services. Homelessness is not just an issue on Metro, but a widespread societal and community challenge. That's why broader and bolder community partnerships are important. All people in LA County, regardless of their life experience, are a part of the fabric of this community. As we look further into the future, let me briefly outline some longer term goals. First, I wanna make Metro the first choice for transportation that people think about. In great cities around the world, London, Paris, New York, DC, taking mass transit is normal and expected. In those cities, it's just what people do. Public transportation is their obvious choice. I want Angelinos to think that way. As they leave their homes, I want them to grab their keys and coffee in one hand and their cell phone and tap card in the other. Next, we must prepare LA County and LA Metro to provide an outstanding travel experience to residents and visitors for the 28 Olympic and Paralympic Games. People will be visiting from all over the world and they will be expecting a world-class transit experience. We are going to give it to them. Part of the challenge is coordination with all the other cities, venues, and transit agencies in the Southern California mega region. 
Coordination is important for our goal of improving our transportation infrastructure to effectively serve the physically abled and disabled community. It will not be an afterthought. We want differently abled riders to have an outstanding experience as well. I have heard from members of the disabled community that they don't take our system because it's not as easy for them to use. Well, we're going to fix that. Woven into all of these efforts is an absolute commitment to sustainability, which is an integral element of all aspects of our decision making and execution. I'm proud that we continue to be a leader in this area, but I believe this isn't limited to only a focus on innovative solutions already in place to improve air quality, protect natural resources, reduce waste, and create connected communities. I believe the focus on initiatives like the Youth Council and our Fairless Initiative are about making decisions that impact riders today and far into the future. Finally, I envision a fully integrated transportation system for the communities that make up Southern California's mega region, a system that is people focused and centered on equity. This requires a strong partnership with our local and municipal operators, Metrolink, our 88 cities, and the councils of government. I have tremendous optimism for the future of LA Metro. We have done some amazing things, not just in the last year, but over the course of our history. And we are going to continue that tradition as we reimagine our service and how we elevate our people. We will pursue innovative and bold ways of solving big problems. I know our Metro staff is the best in the industry, and I'm positive we are going to do great things together. Because at the end of the day, it comes back to serving and taking care of people. In closing, I'd like to quote a poem written by our Metro superfan, Kenny. When he was in 10th grade English class, he wrote, and I quote, traveling in Los Angeles is not a fuss if everyone rides Metro Rail or Metro Bus. Going with a friend, you can't say no, since Metro is the way to go. Thank you. What a way to close it out. Thank you, Stephanie. Now, I have also worked closely with Supervisor Solis on both the Metro and Metrolink boards for years. Hilda Solis has been a pleasure to work with in our collective efforts to provide greater transportation options for both Los Angeles County and the greater Southern California region. As many of you well know, Hilda is dedicated to protecting the environment and improving the lives of working families. I know that experience will serve her well as she leads Metro out of the pandemic and toward implementing Metro's immediate goals for improving the transit experience for its customers. Please welcome LA County Supervisor and Metro's new board chair, Hilda Solis. Buenos dias, and good morning to everyone. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. Uh, to my fellow board members and colleagues, it's wonderful to finally see you all in person. Mayor Eric Garcetti, I want to start by thanking you for all of your efforts, your hard work as chair, and for the many years that you've provided leadership here in Los Angeles and to the county and to Southern California. You've guided Metro through turbulence and tragedy that no one ever could have imagined or expected. And we're truly lucky to have had such leadership from your office and your staff. And I also want to acknowledge our new Chief Executive Officer, Miss Stephanie Wiggins. <laughs> <clears throat> Indeed, it is a very historic day for us. This is the first time that two women of color have ever led Metro. Having known you for some time now, there is no one that I would rather have at my side to help lead Metro over the next year. Acting as our MC today, our new Vice Chair, and my very dear friend, Director Ara Najarian. Thank you so much, Ara. 
Director Najarian has provided steadfast leadership, not only here, but as the chair of Metrolink, and I saw that firsthand. I also want to thank all of our Metro senior leadership team that is here for joining us today, as well as all of those from the community and our stakeholders, labor, business, and I personally want to thank you for those invitations that you, you followed up on. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we come together at a critical time as we are in the midst of adapting to a new normal. This follows a year of unimaginable hardships that our residents endured during the pandemic. From the loss of loved ones to the loss of businesses and homes, residents across the county have endured so much adversity. But throughout it all, Metro and its employees have been providing essential services to well over 500,000 riders each and every day throughout this pandemic. And for that, I would like to take a minute for us to acknowledge all of the Metro frontline workers and the sacrifices that they have made over the last years. Thank you to our bus and rail operators, our division employees, and all of our frontline workers that have kept Los Angeles moving. Without you and your dedication to serving our residents, there would be no Metro. And it is with that dedication in mind that I see great opportunities to equitably serve all residents in Los Angeles. The truth of the matter is that the pandemic exposed and exacerbated structural inequities across the county, but also the country, from homelessness to housing to health disparities and more. And we have to ask ourselves, what role can Metro play in addressing these issues and what can we do better? How can we better serve our constituents? And I'm confident the answer lies in the word better. Better bringing equitable transportation to every resident. And it is that vision that will guide my top three priorities as chair of Metro this year. <laughs> I agree. First and foremost, our riders need better transit service. It's no secret that our ridership has been declining over and over. The ridership took a nosedive during the pandemic, but providing public transit service is more important now to ensure hundreds of thousands of riders access their workplaces, education, and other destinations with the county's reopening. Next gen in our customer experience plan are a few examples of Metro bringing back riders, but we can do so much more. We need to expand this, especially for buses that primarily serve low-income riders. We plan to get back to the 7 million annual revenue service hours by September, and we won't stop there. Beyond expansion, service needs to be faster, more frequent, and more reliable. And we also need to think about how else we can better connect our transit riders. And one way to do that is to establish more affordable housing, projects right next to high quality transit. And over the next few years, as we build projects on the 28 by 28 list, Metro will be acquiring many properties around the county. Properties that will be used for construction staging, new stations, parking lots, and maintenance facilities. And Metro must explore how we can build more affordable housing on these properties sooner, in parallel with major capital projects instead of as an afterthought. Investments in affordable housing near transit are crucial, considering that transit riders come from some of the most disadvantaged neighborhoods in the county. Many bus riders have an average annual income of just 18000 a year. These are the residents that need affordable housing the most. By increasing transit services and tapping into affordable housing projects, we can help prevent displacement of vulnerable communities and give support to riders that need it the most. Second, we must look at how we are spending our transportation dollars and how we are supporting the most vulnerable as we recover from the pandemic. But it's not just about the people we are building for. We also need to think about who's involved in that building process. And this is how we bring equitable transportation to every resident. An example of this is a recent partnership my office launched with Jobs to Move America, the Miguel Contreras Foundation, United Steel Workers, Citrus College, and Protrera. The nine-week job training program prepares workers for employment opportunities in electric bus manufacturing. 
Participants are educated in several subjects, including electrical system, structural mechanics, green battery technology, and blueprint reading. Participants graduate with an OSHA certificate and certificate from completion of Citrus College, which will prepare them to enter employment at Proterra and the larger green technology job market. And our first cohort graduated this past October with 100% completion rate. And it is a truly diverse cohort that includes individuals who formerly experienced homelessness, veterans, women, and minority and low-income participants. We have so many opportunities at Metro to replicate that success. And we need to begin leveraging the return of local hire for federally funded transportation projects. And we need a countywide pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship job training strategy. And we need to continue our work engaging more women in the trades. And a multi-year economic recovery strategy for Metro can tie all of these efforts together. And that strategy can also help our small businesses. Over the last year, the county lost more than 400,000 jobs and saw 7,500 small businesses permanently close. Small businesses, as you know, are the lifeblood of our economy. They make up over 90% of the businesses in Los Angeles County, and they employ hundreds of thousands of low-wage workers. And Metro already does so much for our small business community, but we can always do better. We can expand programs like Eat, Shop, Play to businesses along existing transit corridors that have been heavily impacted by the pandemic. And we can support our street vendors, our micro entrepreneurs, many of whom rely on Metro Station's activity to generate business. And we can look at ways to focus more to contract for contract and procurement dollars in the small business community, especially as we begin building projects in our 2028-28 initiative. And as an $8 billion agency, we at Metro already have the resources to ignite recovery in Los Angeles County, which is why, as chair, this will be one of my top priorities. Imagining highway investments, lastly, I want to talk about that. I'll work with Metro to reimagine our highway program investments. As supervisor of Los Angeles County First District, I can see the disparity created by highway construction every time I look at the map of the areas I proudly represent. Just look at the communities of Boyle Heights and unincorporated East Los Angeles, the 101, the 10, the 5, the 60, and the 710. All these freeways plow through these neighborhoods and were intentionally built here at the height of the federal highway investment. These tangles of freeways displace thousands of residents, and they divide neighborhoods and concentrate pollution in these communities. And you can see examples of this in other parts of the county, too. For example, the 105 freeway, also known as the Century Freeway, displaced over 25,000 residents at a part, as a part of its construction. Historically, highway investments have favored cars over anything else. Now we have a chance and opportunity to change that for the better. And just last month, this board took action to allow Metro's Measure R and Measure M highway dollars to be used toward projects for all users of the road. These highway dollars will now support everyone on the road, whether you bike, you walk, you roll, you take transit, or you drive. This is how being equitable transportation brings that to every resident. Communities along quarters like the 710 South should not be burdened with displacement and pollution even more than they already have been. This is why my third priority is to reevaluate Metro's investments in highway programs to protect communities from displacement and environmental pollution. Collectively, these priorities are rooted in my vision to do better. Metro has always done more than move residents to and from their destinations. Under our leadership, I believe that Metro can serve as a bridge to our communities, our culture, our education, and opportunities that enhance the health and overall well-being of all of our residents. And as chair of the Metro Board, I commit to collaborating with local and community stakeholders, residents and businesses, to develop projects that serve everyone, and especially our most vulnerable. I look forward to partnering with all of you in building a better Metro that equitably serves all of our residents. And I thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias.
I told you we'd be in good hands. Thank you, Chair Solis. I'd now like to ask our former board chair, Mayor Garcetti, to officially pass the gavel to our new board chair. Drum roll, please. Bring this meeting to order. And congratulations. It's all yours. Thank you, Mayor. For our Spanish-speaking audience and media, uh, will you please provide a quick recap of today's address? Lo siento mucho. Muy buenos días a todos. Es un placer estar aquí para hacer esta transferencia de poder como presidente del Comité de Directores de Metro a mi hermana, la supervisadora Solís. Durante la pandemia, Metro mantuvo miles de autobuses y trenes funcionando todos los días. Y la agencia mantuvo un enfoque en crear más oportunidades en movilidad en comunidades históricamente desatendidas, reduciendo congestión y polución y reimaginando nuestro futuro en Los Ángeles. El trabajo para construir el futuro de Los Ángeles siempre está en marcha. Y ahora, después de un año de trauma, y pérdida, podemos con esperanza sobre el futuro. Nos podemos enfocar en recuperarnos y no buscamos volver a la forma en la cual las cosas eran, sino a la forma en la cual queremos que nuestro futuro sea. Continuemos a reconstruir y reimaginar este lugar juntos. Hay que seguir pensando en grande y sin miedo. Hay que ganarle a esta pandemia de una vez por todos y crea una ciudad más fuerte, más justa y mejor conectada. Gracias. Thank you. Buenos días. Me da mucho gusto verlos en persona. Gracias al alcalde Garcetti por su liderazgo como presidente de la Junta de Metro durante un año difícil. También le doy gracias a Stephanie Wiggins, nuestra nueva líder de Metro. Es la primera vez en la historia de Metro que dos mujeres de color se llevan cargo. Y gracias a todos nuestros invitados por estar aquí hoy día con nosotros. Es un gran placer anunciar mis tres metas como presidenta de la Junta de Metro este año. Estas tres metas tienen la visión de mejorar, servir nuestros residentes del condado. Se trata de transporte equitativo para cada residente. Primero, tenemos que dar mejores servicios de tránsito para pasajeros. Cada año baja el número de pasajeros y más durante la pandemia. Ahora que estamos abiertos, el tránsito público va a ser más importante en ayudar a residentes llegar a sus destinaciones. Para eso, necesitamos tener tránsito más rápido, frecuente y seguro. También tenemos que hacer más conectar los residentes con el tránsito. Una manera es tener proyectos de hogares cerca del tránsito público para residentes de bajos recursos. En los próximos años, Metro va a comprar propiedades que se pueden convertir en hogares. Y así residentes de bajos recursos pueden tener acceso a tránsito en sus comunidades. Segundo, tenemos que ver cómo usar dinero de transporte para apoyar las comunidades más vulnerables. Para asegurar transporte equitativo, tenemos que dar más oportunidades de trabajo a la comunidad. Esto será parte de una estrategia para traer oportunidades de educación para grupos diversos en el condado. Y esto también podrá ayudar a nuestros negocios pequeños. En el último año, el condado perdió más que 400,000 trabajos. Hicieron más, cerraron más de 7,500 pequeños negocios. Metro hace mucho para ayudar a los pequeños negocios y podemos hacer mucho más. Podemos apoyar a los vendedores de las calles, pequeños negocios y otros que dependen en el tránsito para que llegue más gente a sus puestos. Como una agencia de 8 billones de dólares, 
Metro tiene los recursos para ayudar la recuperación económicamente en el condado de Los Ángeles. Y por último, voy a trabajar con Metro para evaluar fondos para las carreteras. Como supervisora del primero distrito, la diferencia de las carreteras entre comunidades es muy aparente. El 101 y el 10 y el 5 y 60 y el, y el uh, 7 10 son carreteras que destruyen comunidades. También forzó mucha gente fuera de su comunidad cuando era tiempo de construir estas carreras. Esto es evidente en otras carreteras como el 105, en lo cual 25 mil residentes perdieron hogares por parte de esta construcción. Tenemos la oportunidad para cambiarlo para ser el mejor. Este último mes, la Junta votó en favor de la medida R y M para usar dinero de las carreteras para proyectos que ayudan a todos. Ese dinero puede a ayudar a personas que usan diferentes tipos de transporte, como bicicleta, carro, tránsito y mucho más. Así es como traemos transporte equitativo para cada residente. Como presidente de la Junta de Metro, estoy comprometida a estas tres metas para conectar los residentes al transporte público. Espero colaborar con todos los varios grupos comunitarios y líderes sindicatos y todos para hacer estas metas un realidad. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Gracias. No, I'm not going to say it in Armenian. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us this morning. I invite you all to uh, help yourselves and mingle with a little reception that we have and it says till 11 a.m. but we can go as long as you want. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.